On December 26, 2023, this Reddit post sent shockwaves through the Pokemon Go community. The post claimed that if you hit the smallest catch circle on a Pokemon, what I call a perfect throw, then you will get a guaranteed critical, resulting in a guaranteed catch of that Pokemon. After it was quickly verified that the claim was true, the excitement was palpable. The perfect throw mechanic seemingly promised a new strategy for catching Galarian birds and difficult raid bosses, made even better by the possibility of exploitation via buddy catch assist. But have perfect throws panned out to be as important as initially speculated? I've seen a lot of discussion of perfect throws in the community, but little in-depth analysis. Let's change that. Welcome to the excellent Pokédex. In this video, we will do a deep dive on perfect throws in Pokémon Go. Perfect throws are excellent throws that are made on the smallest possible catch circle. On many Pokémon, perfect throws cause a critical catch, which guarantees the Pokémon will be caught. We will address four major questions about perfect throws. First, how small does the catch circle actually have to be for a perfect throw? Does the throw have to be frame perfect, or is there some wiggle room? Second, do perfect throws guarantee catches on legendaries or raid bosses? They would be very useful for catching Pokemon like Galarian birds that have very low catch rates. Third, do perfect throws work with buddy catch assist? By deliberately triggering buddy assists by waiting for an attack, can we guarantee a catch without needing to throw an extremely precise excellent throw? Finally, and most importantly, is this actually a practical technique? To help answer these questions, I recorded 16 perfect throws of my own, including 4 with Buddy Assist, as well as analyzed some results from the Pokemon Go community. What follows is the best information that I have so far, though there are still some open questions. Let's address catch circle size. The exact amount of wiggle room there is for a perfect throw directly affects how difficult and therefore how practical it is. Let's look at a few thresholds. First, what is the minimum size of the inner catch circle? Surprisingly, I couldn't find any information about this online, so I decided to test it myself. We can't take for granted that it's the same for all Pokemon, so we have to test it for many different Pokemon. I did this by taking a screenshot of the minimum catch circle size and comparing the diameters in pixels of the catch circle and outer gray circle. After examining 16 different Pokemon, it is clear that the minimum catch circle diameter is 10% of the gray circle's diameter. Every measurement is just slightly above 10%, indicating that the next frame would have gone under 10%, resetting the catch circle to maximum size. Next, let's look at the inner catch circle size on successful perfect throws. Just like with the minimum size measurement, I measured the diameter of the catch circle from a screenshot taken just before a perfect throw lands. I took a ratio of this diameter to the diameter of the gray circle to figure out the largest catch circle ratio that resulted in a critical catch. I took this measurement on 16 of my own perfect throws, as well as on a further 4 perfect throw videos from the community. The highest ratio of catch circle to gray circle that I found was 13.38% for a chancy perfect throw. Next, I took the same measurement on 11 of my own excellent throws that I thought were very close to perfect throws, but didn't result in a critical catch. The lowest ratio of catch circle to gray circle that I found was 13.82% for a Dratini non-perfect excellent throw. An outlier that I discarded was a 10.43% ratio for a Passimian non-perfect excellent throw. I suspect that this Passimian was not eligible for a perfect throw for some reason. From these measurements, I conclude that the window for a perfect throw is approximately when the catch circle's diameter is between 10% and 13.5% of the gray circle's size. That means that if the gray circle is this size, then the catch circle has to be this size or smaller, but not smaller than 10%. To figure out how big this window is in terms of time, I first measured the amount of time it takes for a full catch circle cycle from 100% to 10%. I measured this on five different Pokemon to ensure that it didn't differ between Pokemon. In all cases, it took two seconds for a full cycle. Let's do the math. We want to know how long it takes for the catch circle to go from 13.5% to 10%, given that the catch circle goes from 100% to 10% in two seconds. In other words, if it takes two seconds for 90%, how long does it take for 3.5%? This can be calculated as 2 seconds times 3.5% divided by 90%, which is 
which is about 0.08 seconds, or about 1 13th of a second, a little over 2 frames at 30 frames per second. This is a small window, but not inhumanly small, since I and others have been able to hit many perfect throws. But let's compare both of these numbers to ordinary excellent throws. I have seen 30% given as the catch circle size required for an excellent throw, but I decided to verify this myself to be sure. For Scatterbug, Bound Suite, and Curum, I measured the largest excellent throws and smallest great throws that I had videos for. All of the excellent throws were under 30%, and all of the great throws were over 30%, confirming that 30% catch circle size is the threshold for an excellent throw. What is the time window for a regular excellent throw? In other words, how long does it take for the catch circle to go from 30% to 10%? given that the catch circle goes from 100% to 10% in 2 seconds. This can be calculated as 2 seconds times 20% divided by 90%, which is about 0.44 seconds, or almost half a second. How much harder is a perfect throw than an excellent throw? Let's visualize a max size excellent throw compared to a perfect throw. The ratio of the diameters of the excellent throw and the perfect throw is 30% divided by 13.5%, which is about 2.2. This doesn't sound so bad, but the ratio of the areas of the catch circles is 30% divided by 13.5% squared, which is about 4.9 or nearly 5. This means it's about 5 times harder to hit a perfect throw than an excellent throw, not even accounting for the difficult timing window of only 1 13th of a second for a perfect throw. The catch circle area for an excellent throw is about 5 times that of a great throw, so a perfect throw is about as hard compared to an excellent throw as an excellent throw is compared to a great throw. We choose to get perfect throws in this game and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Soon after the initial post about perfect throws, reports started coming in that perfect throws were not resulting in critical catches for various legendaries. I decided to check these reports and see if they provide good evidence that perfect throws aren't working for these Pokemon. First, I looked at Galarian Zapdos. The video provided didn't include the smallest circle size, but we know that the minimum circle size for all Pokemon is 10%, so this isn't a problem. Nonetheless, I verified on a separate video of Galarian Zapdos that the circle size is indeed about 10% of the gray circle size. I measured the diameter in pixels of the catch circle of the perfect throw attempt. It was about 11.75% of the diameter of the gray circle, well within the 13.5% threshold needed for a perfect throw. Since the video shows that a critical catch did not occur, we can conclude that the Redditor is correct, and Galarian Zapdos is not eligible for guaranteed critical catches from perfect throws. As an important side note, Galarian Zapdos is eligible for critical catches in general. Any Pokémon has a 1% chance of a critical catch on any throw. I did the same analysis on this report for Regigigas and found a catch circle size of 10.29% on the throw. Since a critical catch did not occur, we can conclude that Regigigas is not eligible for guaranteed critical catches from perfect throws. I did the same analysis on this report for Zerkatry, and found a catch circle size of 10.17% on the throw. Since a critical catch did not occur, we can conclude that Zerkatry is not eligible for guaranteed critical catches from perfect throws. This is where it gets a little murky. We know that perfect throws guarantee critical catches on many regular Pokémon, and also that perfect throws do not guarantee critical catches on many legendary Pokémon, but we don't know exactly where the line is. For instance, there are reports, including from me, of perfect throws causing critical catches on Ampharos caught after a Mega Raid, but also reports of perfect throws not causing critical catches on other similar Pokémon such as Snorlax. Some have speculated that there is a catch rate threshold where Pokémon with less than a 10% catch rate do not have a guaranteed critical catch given a perfect throw, and those with a higher catch rate do. Other than at the extremes, exactly which Pokémon are eligible for critical catches from perfect throws is still an open question. Earlier in the video, I made a big deal about how difficult perfect throws are. They are 5 times harder than excellent throws, not even accounting for the tiny 1 13th of a second timing window. But what if we could avoid the difficulty altogether? If you have a great buddy as your buddy, then any balls deflected by a Pokémon's attack will be automatically hit back by your buddy and turn into a successful throw, although not necessarily an excellent one. It turns out that you can use this mechanic to get critical catches from perfect throws, 
without having to actually hit the tiny excellent circle. First, you set the circle to the perfect throw size by holding down on the Pokeball without throwing. Then, you wait for the Pokemon to attack, and then, as quickly as possible, throw a ball at the attack animation. If you're lucky, the deflected ball will result in a catch assist. I was able to get four perfect throws this way. Sadly, this technique is not nearly as good as it sounds. First, it does still require some skill to set the catch circle to the correct size. I accidentally got a lot of nice or ordinary excellent throws because of an incorrectly sized catch circle. Second, triggering a catch assist is extremely unreliable. I had to waste a ton of Pokeballs to get the four perfect throws that I did. Most of the time, catch assist did not trigger even when I threw at an attack animation. Third, even if the catch assist is triggered, more often than not it results in a regular throw, not an excellent, even if the catch circle is set correctly. Some people say that turning off native refresh rate improves these chances, but I still found it extremely unreliable. Since perfect throws don't even work on extremely low catch rate Pokemon like Galarian Birds, all of this unreliability just isn't worth it. My hot take is that you don't need to waste 5 plus balls and minutes of your life on trying to exploit catch assist just to get a guaranteed critical catch on a Zigzagoon. In conclusion, is the perfect throw actually a useful, practical technique that players should routinely use? Sadly, I have to say no, because the two most promising use cases either don't work or don't work very well. You don't appear to be able to use this technique on low catch rate legendaries, and excellence from catch assists just aren't reliable. For normal throws on regular Pokemon, the guaranteed catch isn't worth how much more precise the throw needs to be. In most cases, I would say that you should just aim for a far more consistent non-perfect excellent, which is about 5 times easier to hit. The perfect throw guaranteed critical catch is a fun party trick, and was an interesting mechanic to investigate, but is ultimately just a gimmick, and its limitations make it not particularly useful in Pokemon Go. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from the excellent Pokédex. I'll see you next time!